Mr. Thakur Singh, Secretary East, Ministry of External Affairs, Government of India, to kindly deliver the keynote address. Thank you, ma'am. Well, good evening and welcome back to this session after a very, very exciting inaugural session where you heard both the Chief Minister speak as well as our Minister for Tourism and both of them, the messages were very, very welcoming and the messages were there of enthusiasm, encouragement and to also convey to you how important one looks at the youth. Let me also begin by once again welcoming you to here to Guwahati. I know that many of you have traveled from afar and especially I want to welcome those ASEAN friends who would be celebrating the Spring Festival and are here with us this week. I do hope that our efforts to engage you here in Guwahati would make the lunar year celebrations even sweeter in the land of India. I am aware that last year when we did celebrate and we held the first India ASEAN Youth Summit, those who had participated went back with very mem number of memories regarding their experiences and their learnings from India and about India-ASEAN relations. Therefore, what I'm going to do today is also speak a bit on India-ASEAN relations so that you know where the relationship is and how India approaches the relationship and how we look at people's role in this relationship. And I'm also uh, going to talk a bit about Guwahati and thank uh, the government of uh, Assam once again the, for uh, working with the Ministry of External Affairs for the Youth Summit because this, this part of India is actually the gateway of India into the ASEAN and it is the, that part of India in the land boundary which touches uh, ASEAN countries, Myanmar being the first. All of you would also be uh, aware or you would also learn that uh, Thailand has uh, has uh, ancestral links to Assam because you have the Thai race from Thai, uh, from Thai the Thai race from Thailand which has ancestral links with the Ahoms in Assam and this common civilizational linkage is a deep rooted thread that extends to other parts of northeast as well and Subsequently, as we look into history and we look at the colonial period, we saw that many Indians migrated to Southeast Asia in the 18th and 19th century when the British colonial rulers were sending hundreds and thousands of Indians to work in plantation and mines in the region. Their descendants today constitute a vibrant community of Indian origin people contributing actively to their respective countries. If you look at Malaysia, Malaysia alone has nearly two million persons of Indian origin, constituting the second largest Indian diaspora abroad after the United States. Even in Singapore, where I had served, there is a large Indian community, a very community that contributes to the country in which they live in. Today, the Youth Summit brings together youth from 11 countries, 10 ASEAN and Indians. And I think the holding of this summit here in India is important because demographically, India is one of the most youthful nations in the world. And also because we are a country where there is so much of uh, diversity, so much of uh, 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 plurality, but yet, as Rabindranath Tagore said, Rabindranath Tagore is a Nobel laureate poet, and he called India a sea of great human confluence, a melange of unity and diversity, of plural identities living harmoniously 
in a multicultural federal polity, and that itself is a sight to behold. Last uh, month, which was on 26th of January, India celebrated 70 years of becoming a republic. And when we did so, it brought us memories of the last Republic Day, that is the 69th Republic Day, when all 10 ASEAN leaders, all your leaders, were in India, in Delhi, in an unprecedented gesture to grace the celebrations of our Republic Day as chief guests. This unique, iconic moment of history, which I think has been very, very important milestone also in our relationship with ASEAN because we were celebrating 25 years of strong India-ASEAN dialogue partnership. That moment and that year will go down in history and you and future generations will talk about it of a great moment and an iconic moment in the history of India-ASEAN relations. It was also the time when we adopted the Delhi Declaration that would go that would lay down the ground for future relations between India and ASEAN countries. It is also reminiscent that the future of India and ASEAN will be built by the young. And then there is a lot of exciting possibilities and a lot of exciting options. And when you look at India, you look at India as a country which is growing rapidly. It is a country which has got if you look at it in terms of innovations, if you look at it in terms of startups, if you look in terms of uh, the new way of thinking, India is the country where the youth are doing so much. And today you did have uh, Gopinath, who is our national coach, who coaches some of our badminton players, and how they have gone on to conquer uh, the badminton courts and to become champions. I do know that between India and ASEAN also, there's a lot of exciting, uh, uh, exciting um, uh, programs that we have. But let me go over 50 years uh, that India and ASEAN have been engaging with each other. We have so many common possibilities. And even though we, we are looking at people connect, we are looking at cultural connects, we are looking at commercial connects, we are looking at connects through the digital world. We are looking at connects through air travel. We are looking at and exploring our old maritime connects. So you see the connects are so, so many, and the partnerships that possibilities of partnership are so, so many. Young universities are here. We today have the vice chancellor of Nalanda University with us, and she, Nalanda University, would be leading in terms of working together with the ASEAN network of universities to see how we can work together. And university is where p young people live. So I'm sure that many of you would look at Nalanda as an opportunity and a possibility where you can go and study there and at the same time go to the land of Buddha and ex look at the rich cultural heritage of Buddhism in India and Buddhism that so much connects India and the ASEAN countries. And what about the ASEAN? The ASEAN community, which started about 50 years ago, it has also evolved and it has strengthened. It has come a long way. And despite some challenges, which undoubtedly everybody faces in life, you will face challenges um, as you work together. But despite that, ASEAN has consolidated itself into a common community in a rapidly Geopolitical uncertainties also, ASEAN has shown that its way of working together, its work working together on the basis of consensus is a very positive way forward to resolve differences and to work together. We believe in India that ASEAN unity and centrality is important not only for the ASEAN, but also for the Indo-Pacific region. And from the India perspective, it is our view that precisely because ASEAN represents the cultural, commercial, and physical, uh, is located at the cultural, commercial, and physical crossroads of the region, it has a unique ability to reflect and harmonize larger interests of the world beyond it. This is the importance that we attach to the ASEAN. And if you look at the last four years, 
you would see Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji. He not only he was present at all the four ASEAN Indian summits. He participated in every East Asia summit since 2014. He gave the di direction to our approach towards ASEAN countries. We moved away from look east to act east, and you can see greater energy there. You can see greater action there, and you can see greater commitment towards the ASEAN in our foreign and security paradigm. In the ASEAN relations, of course, as I mentioned, is 25 years old. We have a series of about 30 dialogue mechanisms operating at various levels. Apart from the summit le uh, level leadership and the summit level engagement who meet annually, there is also our foreign ministers who meet under various formats to discuss India-ASEAN relations. We also have senior officials from all the countries who also meet every year to see what and how to work in various sectors in which we have engagement with the ASEAN. India and ASEAN, if you look at it, thriving economies. In fact, when we talk in terms of uh, the 21st century, the century which we are, are living in, it is described as the Asian century. It is the it's going to be the Asian century and is the Asian century because the highest growth rates are taking place in our part of the world. If you look at across and you look at um, other continents, the growth rates there, some, I have had occasions where I've had discussions and somebody tells me that, oh, we got 2% growth rate. We are very happy with it. I won't name the country. But then countries like us, we are looking at growth rates of at least 6%, and India has been growing at an average of more than 7.5% over the last four years. And India and ASEAN together are huge. The combined economic size of India and ASEAN together is US dollars, $3.8 trillion. We enjoy a substantial share of world resources, both physical and in terms of mines, mineral resources, and most importantly, in terms of human resources, because we also are got young demography. The youngest age group lives in our part of the world as well. And therefore, the engagement between the youth becomes so important between India and the ASEAN countries, because the, in the future, the largest proportion of population would be living in these parts of the world. Therefore, talking to each other, building bridges, building friendships, getting to know each other will contribute to a world in which there is greater opportunity, in which there is greater engagement, in which there is greater trade, in which there is greater investment flows, and there is greater peace as well. And bilateral trade between India and ASEAN today is hovering around $80 billion. We hope to reach the target of $100 billion trade between India and ASEAN. The target is 2020, and I'm confident that if we work together, we would be able to reach that target. India-ASEAN trade currently uh, contributes to 10% of India's total trade, and ASEAN is India's fourth largest trading partner, whereas India is ASEAN's seventh largest trading partner, and we do hope that through bilateral negotiations and also through an agreement on RCEP, which is the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, which is being uh, negotiated between the ASEAN countries and six of its dialogue partners, including India, would contribute to a balanced outcome, an outcome which will theref thereafter contribute to greater growth between the, two, between the RCEP participating countries. If you look at investments, flows both ways, ASEAN accounts for almost 18.2% of investment flowing into India since 2000. Uh, if you look at Indian investments into ASEAN, those are also substantial. So it's a two-way flow which takes place even on investment matters. Indians are investing in ASEAN countries, ASEAN countries are investing in India, and we hope that that investment process will continue because there are uh, opportunities in a growing India and there is an opportunity in a growing ASEAN region. 
India has endeavored to build for the ASEAN across all forms of connectivity. I spoke about it earlier. It is whether we do it through land, we do, do it through air, sea, digital, people to people, we would be looking at how to intensify that connectivity with, uh, with the ASEAN countries. Speaking as I am in Guwahati, Guwahati is uh, a hub of the Northeast region. And I do hope that the ambassadors present here today and His Excellency, the High Commissioners, would look at taking in direct flights from their respective capitals to Guwahati. We do have, uh, as Chief Minister mentioned, the possibility of Guwahati-Bangkok flight, but I think we are looking at Guwahati-Kuala Lumpur, Guwahati-Singapore, Guwahati-Jakarta, Guwahati-Manila. So let's look at making Guwahati, which is really the first neighbor of uh, ASEAN countries as they look at India, a hub of activities and a hub where you can fly directly for tourism, for trade, for investment and uh, adventure because Kaziranga is where it is and I was speaking to a group of young students and I told them I hope you do go there, I hope you do see a rhino and if a rhino does chase you, run for your lives. <laughs> well, uh, so we do hope that that works but you look from here also, apart from the air connectivity which I spoke, you also have a India ASEAN. Uh, India is building a highway, a trilateral highway from India to Myanmar to uh, Thailand. And it is a stretch spanning about 1,600 kilometers. It would link the three countries together. It is a highway where we hope that will result in flow of goods, in a, a flow of people, and also there would be economic corridors, so you have a lot of activity taking a place around that highway. We are currently engaged uh, in seeing how this highway could go further into the ASEAN countries, into neighboring Cambodia, Lao PDR, and Vietnam. And the other projects that we are looking in terms of uh, connectivity is also the Kaladan Multimodal Transport Project, and also a digital connectivity project which we are working with the four uh, countries, Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, and Vietnam, and that is digital villages. We're taking a whole con village and seeing how it can be digitized. All the services can be made available on a plat uh, uh, social platform and uh, through optic fibers. So it is a project where we are working with four countries and we do hope that that would help in terms of also greater connectivity, digital connectivity between India and the ASEAN countries. Uh, we have also, as I mentioned, young people, large proportions of young people, and therefore, as policymakers, it should be our effort that we bring together the young people, and I'm happy that we have been working in this regard, and we would continue to reinforce our efforts in this field, but we do offer a number of programs to promote youth exchanges. We have ASEAN scholars and scientists. They are invited through calls for proposals under SNT fellowship schemes and ASEAN in the innovation platform. We ask them to come here to work together and see how we can together do something innovative or something in the field of science and technology. We have ASEAN in, uh, school children who are invited every year to participate at the annual National Children's Science Congress. They come here and it has been something we have been doing for some years, it's working very well. So those are the young children who come here. And then we also have for the youth, apart from the summit, we also have under uh, uh, ASEAN India Hackathon and we have a ASEAN India Startup Festival. So therefore we s hope that some of you who are present here today will take back with you that there is an Asia Indian Hackathon and a Startup Festival. Do find out more about it and participate in it. Uh, and I hope to see some of you here going back and spreading the word around among your friends about all the various activities India does about the youth. And needless to say, when one of you becomes a diplomat, which I'm sure many of you in this room would, would want to and do become, then India would be happy to have you over and in a training program as a part of exchange that takes place currently between India diplomats coming from your countries and our diplomats also going to some 
to uh, train at our Foreign Service Institute, and there and from there build up friendship between the diplomatic community. As I have also personally, I can say I've in, uh, served in your part of the world, in the ASEAN region, and I've got some friends through my diplomatic career who from one learns so much about in terms of conduct of diplomacy, in knowing opportunities that exist. So I want to encourage all of you to look at public service and to look at diplomacy also as career options as you study and as you dream, as our minister said, do dream, dream a lot, dream high, but put diplomacy also in your dreams. Well, in conclusion, I can just say that India-ASEAN Dialogue Partnership is not only a celebration of the structured engagement across the various pillars that two governments have, pillars of when we discuss political issues, security issues, but it's also a celebration of our future. It's a celebration of our youth with whom we have high hopes. And we know that you are going to work towards uh, with energetically to make a world a better place. In the coming days, you would be here talking about and exploring the various linkages that exist between India and the ASEAN, historical linkages, possibilities of skill development, possibility of maybe understanding something about, you know, we have a tradition in India, we have traditional games. I hope you understand, uh, you get an exposure to some of the traditional games of India as you're here and you build friendships. I want to just add, end with one word that do dream, do dream high, and do contribute to India ASEAN friendship. I end here. Thank you so much for your patient listening, and all the very best. And Jai Hind. Thank you so much, ma'am, for that overarching focus on the India-ASEAN relations. Uh, we'll, Prince will begin the next uh, session in about five minutes as we get the stage ready. Thank you so much. Mr. Mohan Patwari, who is the Honorable Minister for Transport, Parliamentary Affairs, and Industry and Commerce for the Government of Assam. May I request Mr. Patwari to come on to the dais, sir? And to interact with us on this topic, we have uh, Honorable Chief Minister of Manipur, Mr. N. Viren Singh. Sir, may we kindly request you to come on to the dais. Uh, I will now hand over the proceedings to Mr. Patwari. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we are happy that 11 countries of ASEAN, we are meeting together here, our youth, the new generations. And in fact, being the minister of this, of the government, uh, we feel it privileged and proud that this youth conclave of ASEAN countries is here today. And among us, our Honorable Chief Minister N. B. Singh, Honorable Chief Minister of Manipur, is very dynamic leader. And he was a very renowned sportsman, so sportsman also, very good footballer and very dynamic chief minister. So he's 
with us. So first, I'd like to request Honorable Chief Minister N.B. Singh, Honorable Chief Minister Mijaram, to deliver his speech. A very good evening to all of you. Uh, Sri Sandra Mahant Patuareji, Honorable Minister of Transport, Parliamentary Affairs, Industry and Commerce of Government of Assam. His Excellency, Mr. Pham Sansou, Ambassador of Vietnam to India. Sri Ajoy Singh, Chairman and MD, Spice It. Governor, Trustee, Directors, Official of the India Foundation, Academicians, Entrepreneurs, Speakers, Stakeholders, and Invitees from the various part of the ASEAN. A very good evening again. To everyone, it is my pleasure to be here today for the second Asian India Youth Summit 2019. 2017 was a landmark year for both Asian and Asian India partnership. While Asian celebrated 50 years of its existence, we celebrated 25 years of meaningful partnership with ASEAN. In the past two decades and a half, ties between India and ASEAN have grown by leaps and bounds. Since the introduction of the Lugis policy of India in the 1990s, we have accomplished substantial progress in political security economics and the socio-cultural areas. The remaining of the look is policy is act is policy by the current government of India led by Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji is reflective of his commitment to deepening its ties with the region. Asian India relationship is based on a strong cultural and civilization ties. There exists a strong cultural affinity between the Northeast region of India, in particular with the Asian region. The Northeast region of India is also endowed with risk, natural and uh, cultural diversity. It is now seen as a new engine of growth for India. All these are compelling reasons for the Northeast of India to establish itself as a land hub of India's ex policy. Considering the importance of this policy, the state government of Manipur has constituted a state level committee to aid and advise in the effective operationalizations of ex policy in Manipur in association with the government of India. My state Manipur, known as the Zoil of India, with a population of 2.72 million and an area of 22,327 square kilometer is proudly guarding the eastern frontier of the country and is literally the land gateway of India to Southeast Asia. To unlock the latent potential and the untapped opportunities in the state and in the regions, it is important to ensure that physical and social infrastructures are robust. Physical connectivity through India, air, land, and sea is vital to facilitate during enduring partnership and collaboration. Though there are challenges facing bias, yet we have not stopped 
in our efforts in this direction. We have not stopped dreaming. Cities are getting crowded and congested with rising population and uh, increasing vehicular traffic. New ideas, new concepts, and out-of-the-box solutions are indeed needed to tackle these new age problems. Cities require restructuring. Elevated highways, straddling cities, ring roads are being planned in Imphal City, the capital of Manipur. The Asian highways, one and two, pass through Manipur. The Asian highways is a grand plan for a great road that will pass through India's Norris, connecting the region to Asian and beyond. 